we're here in Connecticut, um, Paulette and I. This is a um, road trip to teach a bunch of students how to do uh, tricolor um, over palladium, but we're also working from black and white originals and color. And what we've been doing is splitting the channels for uh, CMY, and we've been making negatives from the color images with a platinum palladium base image. But what we've also been doing is going into a feature uh, called Blend If, which is a double click on your uh, layer and you will see this function where we can separate the highlight region, the midtone region, and the shadow region. Now I don't know if that came across, but what we're trying to do is mimic with platinum palladium and gum over traditional silver gelatin quad tone prints which is something I've been doing for years over 25 years where we make a silver gelatin print and then we bleach sepia the highlights and then we put sepia into the highlights then we add gold toner for the upper mid tones and then we selenium tone for the shadows and then at the very end we add iron blue and for years the, su the success rate of doing the iron blue has been problematic and I've always been having problems with that but I love the look now what we're doing here with, by combining Photoshop functions with film and making platinums we can separate the highlight region the shadow region and the midtone and apply beautiful color into those regions. And over this weekend, we're going to see how these students react to this and how difficult. I believe it's going to be simple, easy, and fun. And I think it's going to be a groundbreaking print process that we can put out to gallery shows from here on in. Thanks. The underlying reason for continuing photography is the permanence and the, the ability to leave behind a legacy is what I want to do. And the only way that I think we can really lay, leave behind a real good legacy is with silver, platinum palladium, carbon transfer, gum, uh, pigment in gum. We're concentrating on digital negatives, a palladium base, and then gum colored applied color so Jim who's the most famous photographer in the world and what is the image that Steichen Steichen what and year 1915 and what was it the moonrise over the pond and what process was it it was platinum gum with applied color on with applied color that's what you're going to do today so we're now almost a hundred years later we're now doing it the way Steichen did it 100 years ago. Involved with the New England Large Format Group, um, not from the beginning, but pretty close. I met Steve at one of the large format conventions. Steve uh, was talking to me about this. We had taken a trip to Toronto and said, you know, Mr. Carney's doing this workshop. Would you be interested? And I said, I'm on board. Let's do it. The workshop has been wonderful. It has not been a nuts and bolts kind of deal. Sometimes you get into workshops and the questions get into super detail. They've kind of kept that a little bit lighter so that we can get more hands-on to do prints and hopefully that will, uh, not hopefully, but I will be interested enough to follow up with this and then get into the nuts and bolts on my own time. Yes, we've, uh, Bob uh, Carney showed us uh, what what's entailed in making a digital negative in the uh, output, what we're trying to do output-wise, not so much the nuts and bolts of the computer and gigabytes or programs or software, but, but has given us, you know, places to go for that kind of stuff but here's the negatives this is how we got there now get in the dark room you know, make a platinum print here's how you coat a platinum print okay once it's dry now we're gonna start adding color based on our different each in person's individual image he's given us recommendations as to what primary colors to start with so that when we're done we'll get an image um, that's maybe a little bit different than what we expected but in a good way, you know, there would be something more better or worse. And at least we'll know on the next time around which direction to go for it. The trick is to try to put down a hundred steps of tone. <coughs> if you can lay down a hundred steps of tone, 
then you've got every possibility at your fingertips for uh, making decent the points. We, we separate into the three colors, CMY, cyan, magenta, yellow. But we do a black and white conversion instead of the K. So CMYK, the K is a black printer in, 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 in most printing processes. We're not using the K. We, we dump the K and we use the palladium as the detail. The process we're about to do is, a, is, is right in the middle between a frisson and a dye transfer. So we're going to be a little bit rough but a little bit better detail because we've got exact registration. We're using this registration nobody else that I'm aware of is using it right now. <clears throat> Our control strip was better here than we have in Toronto and we're freaked out about that. Why is it better here? And it could be the United better. States, it, it's got to be. It's got to be. <laughs> well, a little bit has to do with me. Yeah, it's, 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 it's most definitely Steve Sherman. I will yeah. tell you something about this whole process. Humidity, uh, water quality are two of the most important elements in this kind of process. Whether it's palladium, platinum, gum over, and not jumping around like a fish out of water when something goes wrong. Or typically, or what we want to do is, we always the, make um, sure that we've got um, one of the registration marks at the bottom of uh, the image, so print the printable so area. You can see, um, we've got our stripping, we've got everything lovely, lovely. And that's emulsion down, right? This is emulsion down. Okay. It is always emulsion down, yeah. just like in the dark room. Does the, that seem to... Well, I would highly recommend using that. It just seems that this little, it, it's just not, it doesn't snap down quite. Uh -huh. It needs a rinse in between, um, in between processor, or in between trays, only because the more you rinse, the less crap you have in the trays at the end. Nice, long, beautiful strokes. So like edge to edge type of idea. Then that way, and the chemistry amount that we're using is perfect for an 1114. So feel free to go edge to edge all the way around. Common thing. Could you have a tool that we could use for priming? Pretty much, yes, yes. Little ACDC, whatever, whatever it takes to get this sucker going. A little bit of distilled water on the tip. Oh, okay. You want nice, yeah. You want nice long strokes, and then you go the opposite way. Is water, um, especially with the palladium print. If you are going to make an error and if you are going to have a loogie in the middle of your print, it is because you have gotten a water droplet. It took me forever to figure it out. <laughs> Typically for platinum, I, I no, only I think, use I think Vostok was willing to take it I've back I've used and creams it quite a bit. Uh -huh. we have. Yeah. In so silver gelatin printing, so Steve, myself, and all kinds of printers will like to put some split tone into the print to archive it better, like sepia selenium. So the sepia, we'd bleach the print, and then these highlight regions here, like the higher ones, they bleach out a little bit, go they go whiter, and then you add the sepia in, and the brown goes into the highlight regions. So we can do the same thing with over top of the palladium. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a layer, and this is the fun part. You double click on this layer here, and a um, blend if comes up. If you don't, this is another thing too about printmaking, and I want I want you all to understand this is that when you're making prints, the best printmakers in the world don't get freaked out about it's got to be perfect. So good printmakers get over themselves, and then they start letting it happen and then they look at it and then they walk away from it a bit so if you want perfect looking prints make inkjets it's the best technology out there right now for making high-end color imagery but if you want something that is like a jewel like something that is just you look at it and you say holy smokes that looks beautiful something that will move you this process can take you to that down that garden road
Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. It ain't over till it's over. It ain't over till it's over, and sometimes when you think it's all over, you put up on the wall, and people are saying, that's a brilliant print. It, you gotta just let this process happen, and not get too caught on the fact that it may be light. You may find out that it's gonna be, we're gonna darken it. Sure. But we're not gonna know until you start laying down your pigment. Yeah, layers. Yeah. Layers, because we're not gonna know three steps. So we're one step into it. Here, we're the first stage, then we get into the palladium and it starts looking good. And then you put your first layer and it starts looking like crap. And you say, "What? Am, we're, we're wrecking this. And then you put on the next layer of gum and say, oh, I get it now. Now they start looking beautiful. So don't get, don't panic. Okay. I'm waiting for my shadow layer of paint. Shadow? It's best to kind of move closer to the painting. So that, Marie, yours is coming. Okay. So Peter Rudy. We're looking at this. What's the dominant color in that scene? Brown. 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 Cyan. So it's the opposite. opposite. What you're saying. Well, I see a lot of brown down here, but I see a lot of moss. And when I mean dominant color, what what makes up green? What two colors? Pass me the chart, green. please. Blue and yellow and blue. I mean yellow and blue. No, not yellow and blue. Cyan and yellow make green. Cyan, yellow, make green. Let's nail this contrast a bit by deepening the shadow. So, <clears throat> you know in the sliders, when you hit black and you bring them across, all of a sudden the image looks fantastic? That's what I'm suggesting Monty's going to do here. He's going to, he's going to put the, he's going to set the blacks mm. with the blue on top of the grays that are here, the dark grays. Excellent. Does that make sense? Does. Okay, Paula, that's, you got your first two. Monty's going to go blue, and Saddle Liz, up, and Liz is <laughs> going to go there. <laughs> okay. So, who was, we've got uh, David Amon. Fasten your seat. We're in for a funky ride. We also have one that's already coated, so while we're waiting for yours to dry, we'll, uh, we'll hit one. Okay. Another, a second platinum. Okay. okay. So let me just show you how this goes. I'm from Boston area, Arlington, Massachusetts. I'm a biochemist working in the biotech world. Um, the, the workshop is a, was, it's a very interesting experience. Um, both Bob Carney and uh, Paulette are uh, experts at what they do and they're pretty good teachers too. Um, it, it was all pretty clear as to what the steps were for how we take um, digital negatives uh, for each of the different layers and how we go about coating our paper and exposing the paper and uh, washing and developing and coming up with a, a final print. Um, the, the first one that I made was just a little bit out of register which meant that all of the layers didn't line up exactly so it was a, a little um, a little fuzzier than I would have wanted, but I carried it all the way through and that turned out to not be a problem. Um, but in anticipation that it might be, I started a second one um, where I actually learned how to lay the layers down and register it um, and went through the same uh, coding and processing uh, steps and came with this one. Um, which I like quite a bit. It's and it's quite a bit different from the the first one. So uh, I'm I'm thinking that this is definitely going to be a process that I incorporate into presentations for photographs that seem to lend themselves to this. Um, I would I would make sure you're you're getting into this white rebate here, um, and even onto some of these registration marks. I didn't mention that earlier. But I recommend that because then that way, if you go out of registration, you know which color went out of registration. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also, you also are well, I would make sure that you're well outside of your whole entire visual image area because then that way it just makes it easier to match. Nice dark green. As you can see, what we've got right now is we're at about a 69-ish degree water temperature. You can see the yellow coming out of it. That is the dichromate. This is the most dangerous part of this process right here. You don't need to fuss over this right now. 
So you slid this into still water. Still water, just leave it alone. Because, because essentially, this is now a really delicate one. Oh, so back in. There you go. And now you can give it a little bit of a shuka shuka. And yes, that is a technical term. Personally, I'd put the gold in on that highlight. As a mid-tone or as a highlight? Highlight, as a highlight. Behind right that mask. Because yeah. okay. this one's deep into the... The platinum is looking quite nice in the mid-tone section. So do the do the gold as a uh, same exposure as the um, as my original platinum print, as your uh, your original cyan, uh, uh, cyan. That's what and remember what I said earlier mm. about the Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, uh, you know what? This is this is artwork and it's it's uh, subjective anyway. Exactly. And nobody's ever gonna know. This looks like a cyanotype. Yeah. Cyanotype lasts 200 years. This will last a thousand years. There's the big difference. <laughs> it's already. I'm lasted. gonna wait and see if you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we can all meet at his grave, can't but, we? <laughs> but we do know that pigments last this long. Sure. But that's that's quite quite beautiful. And that's exactly what it would have looked like in 1905 or whenever that was they would have they the artists back then may have done it this way yeah right so you're you're mimicking not mimicking you're actually making and mimicking is not the right word you're actually making recreating how's that sound that sounds very good yeah. i'm from durham connecticut and i'm a professional photographer i deal with portraits and weddings and events and uh, babies and animals and all week long um, I'm a charter member of NELF. I was there in the beginning when they started it, and um, it's been 12 years now. It's been a fun and very wonderful learning experience, and I can't, can't say enough about being with this wonderful group of people. This time, um, we've had several workshops over the years. Every one of them gets better and better and find more useful and more useful. This one ha probably has gone over the top with what my expectations were to what I realized and I um, can't say enough about our two instructors and look forward to working more in this medium the uh, tricolor over by uh, over plat palladium but it was also great a great learning experience from the beginning to the end we seemed to pick up it quickly so we kept moving on it and it was uh, a lot of fun the Achilles, the Achilles heel of all these processes has always been we hear the words romantic, soft, gentle about this process because in the past most of it was not registered properly and you'll see <clears throat> when you start researching this you'll see people going to incredible, incredible steps to get the paper to not shrink. Mounting to aluminum takes away that argument. It flattens the ground. It won't shrink. The argument against this is, well, it's mounted to aluminum. What am I going to do with a great big sheet of 30 by 40 aluminum with the print on? Well, actually, that's a good thing because you've already now got a perfect mount. If you have a warm object in the foreground against a cool green background and <clears throat> the object is red, turn your green background to the cyan element and you will pick up a natural complementary color combination. But I'm just telling you that like you're at the very cusp of, of, of this mm -hmm. kind of Yeah we've been feeling like let's, that. Let's push it out there because if you don't push it out there then it's not gonna happen. But I can quite frankly this 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 beats any commercial color portrait that I've I see, right? But that's just my own feelings, because I know this one will last. Talking about the yellow David, have you looked at it from, like, yeah. from this distance? Because no. Because <laughs> it's quite spectacular from this distance. I think I've got even more work to do now. I wonder whether the metabisulfate may just open it won't, that up it, just it, enough. Well, it won't bring the cyan in the boats that we were seeing in, in, in the, mm -hmm. you know, but once again, I don't think I'd want to screw the success too much on this one. Mm -hmm. I, this is a beautiful, it's almost like a hand-painted 
photograph. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's the right. best that's ever been. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And this is try three. But but but, but <laughs> look here. What's I find <coughs> incredible is the green motor. That, so in a color one, you can play like we are mid tone with that blend if you can go in and play with colors and isolate colors and make masks for that only. So you can do what they would call in the trade spot colors. Right. I'm Holly Gettings. I'm an art teacher in Belmont, Massachusetts. I teach photography in the traditional wet process. I also teach a little bit of digital. Uh, I live in Arlington, Massachusetts. I'm a large format photographer. I'm a member of the New England Large Format Photography Collective. We're here doing some gum bichromate work, uh, which is a, an area of uh, printing that I've been very interested in for the last four or five years now. We've been having a great time downstairs uh, in Steve's uh, dark room. He's got a really well-equipped dark room, which makes it a pleasure to do these processes. We have all the equipment that we need. We have a really great group of very dedicated photographers. We're all go-getters, and so we've been chomping, chomping our way through this uh, time very productively. Uh, I, I love, what I love is working with shoulder to shoulder with uh, a bunch of photographers who know as much or more than I do about photography. Uh, so I'm learning a lot from them. I'm learning a lot from Bob Carney, of course, and his and, uh, and Paulette, his assistant, who is an amazing teacher herself. Uh, and looking at how they specialize in what they do, we didn't think that we were going to learn as much about negative making as we have, but uh, it, it's been amazing to sit with Bob and watch him construct these negatives. He, he really um, has started to unlock the process of creating these things a little bit more for me. I, I feel more confident in creating my own curves and, you know, pushing my, pushing my negatives in the direction I want to, for the images that I want to make. I think that's really empowering. Every new image is a surprise, every new image is a, oh my god, that's so beautiful. Um, and there's such a variety, you know, we have beautiful sunlit, shafty, forested landscapes. We have the rocky New England landscapes with lots of pine needles. We've got my image from Mount Desert Harbor, which is all these rowboats. We've got some beautiful portraits. In fact, there's two portrait artists who are working on great skin tone um, and beautiful blue eyes. Uh, it's been amazing to see the diversity of work that students have been bringing to this workshop and how well it, the gum process adapts to all of these, all of these topics. Um, I'm very pleased with this rendition of it. Uh, my one little red boat here comes out very clearly where it was getting lost completely before. I love how I've got natural green harbor water underneath here with the green highlights in the sun. Um, and I've got my delicate faded colors on the dories where I want it. And uh, I was not able to get that before. So this is clearly in uh, the realm of creating the right negatives. Jumping in here. Next Who's doing the metabisulfate? Nobody um, what, right now. I, I, so far right now. Thank you very much, my friend. Oh. 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 Nice. That's a really nice. Yeah. Um, essentially, this is a uh, potassium metabisulfite wash in 10% solution. What we're doing is we are ensuring that all the dichromate from the gum bichromate process is rinsed out properly. So we are leaving it in the solution for about 45 seconds and then it is about a 45 minute wash afterwards in a clear water bath just to ensure that there is no residual staining and no long-term damage to any part of the print. It's not an instantaneous thing. It's just slowly happening. The whites are just cleaning up a little bit. Stepping in. This is yesterday? Yeah. Ten seconds. What'd you say, 45? Yeah. Um, Gene, could you just hold that up? Well, it's in shadow right now. That's, that's impressive. I'm coming over in ten seconds. Oh, okay. 
That's impressive. Man. But you see all the amounts of time it goes in the water. If you don't have this registration system, there's no way you can do this. It's like, forget about it. I live in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, I'm 49 years old. Uh, I shoot formats from 717 to 10 by 12 all the way up to 20 by 24 inches. Uh, the camera's about 60 pounds and has lenses that weigh up upwards of 20 pounds. Uh, it's, it's a haul to get that camera out. Wow. Uh, but if you have a shot that you're excited about and committed toward, it, it has a really neat experience. Well, I got started in photography through alternative processes. Um, I learned platinum and palladium as my first process in photography. Uh, my second, other than just turning 35 millimeter over to, to a lab, you know, but as a serious photographer, um, my first process was platinum palladium. I've never done silver printing. Um, and I started realizing I wanted different size prints and digital negatives hadn't been really raised to a level that could compete with film at that time. And that's how I ended up with the different size cameras as I wanted different size prints and I wanted some large prints. And um, through the pursuit of large format photography specifically, uh, I had the good fortune of having my sense of community broadened and I met Steve Sherman uh, at a large format photography conference um, in Rockford, Illinois and um, had a wonderful time uh, catching up with him and meeting him and um, as a result you know you, you continue to pursue different formats or not formats but processes and I've had a chance through some online sites to meet uh, Bob Carney and I've, I'm always amazed at the mystery of life in which people who are pursuing similar things find each other, you know, through good fortune, through word of mouth, and well, you should know this guy because he's doing similar things. And Bob and Steve came together, and through that, I came together with everyone, and it's been a really wonderful uh, confluence of events that have led us here. The workshop here today and over the weekend has just been spectacular. Um, I'm really excited because I started in Platinum Palladium as my first process. To be able to add some nuance and layers and growth to that process and add gum over Platinum Palladium as a, as a possibility uh, really excites me. Um, more so because two world-class printers in Steve and Bob are the ones passing on the information because not only do you get the actual nuances of the process itself, you get there years and years and years of experience and um, there's probably not a dollar figure on getting to hear uh, people talk of that caliber in one room and not only at the conference but over lunch over dinner different uh, offshoots of the topic start taking place and you just adding layers and layers and layers of learning that are really exciting and I'm looking forward to going home uh, being inspired by this workshop and, and taking this process and seeing what, you know, Monty McCutcheon can do to it and add his little flavor to the vapor of all this that's out there. And that's exciting. Fantastic. So, well, we're looking forward to the gallery opening. Make sure we get an invitation. <laughs> you got it. Thank, Thank you, Pete. Hi there. Um, so my name is Bob Carney and uh, I'm in Connecticut right now uh, leading a workshop at Steve Sherman's uh, Darkroom. And with us is Paulette Mikhaila, who is helping us um, with this whole weekend. And we are we are um, at this end of a two-day um, marathon of making gum over palladium prints. And um, we've had a lot of success this weekend. This is a sample of one of the prints that we've done this weekend. We're working towards another workshop in December. And it's going to be a four-day workshop where we, we expand on what we've done here today. So um, we've had 15 people in here today. We've made um, two or three prints each. We've played with um, black and white images, adding on tone in three different layers. We've split channels. We've separated film out. And we've stripped all the film together. And everybody, everybody in, enjoys uh, the process and it seems that we, we're getting results that are making people quite happy so uh, we'd like to see you in Toronto uh, in December if you want to come we probably will do this uh, 
biannual, so the next one will be in December for four days, and in the summer we'll do one in July for four days again. And the three of us will run these workshops over the next few years, and hopefully we'll have some of the people from this workshop come. We've already been taking some people in Toronto and surrounding areas, and um, you know, we hope you come. My name is Steve Sherman. Uh, you are in my dark room right now in Central Connecticut. Um, Bob Carney and I have uh, teamed together to to create some uh, all-encompassing uh, uh, analog. Uh, that's my specialty, analog photography, with a very specific. Uh, uh, specialty in negative design. Uh, my function at the Toronto workshop in December will be uh, negative design, uh, camera movements, how to how to learn what to learn in, in camera movements with a view camera, um, thought process in the field as to how to create depth and dimensionality in, uh, in a negative. Um, bring it back, process it with a, a process that I uh, perfected 10 or 12 years ago, uh, known as reduced agitation uh, development. Uh, that's all going to be done on site in Toronto. Uh, then you'll come into the dark room with me uh, and make silver gelatin prints with a, uh, a method that I call uh, sp split correction uh, contrast printing. And uh, we'll bring it through to uh, museum quality uh, mounting of those images. And you'll have the three of us uh, to critique your work and your uh, thought process as to how um, you go about making uh, images and arriving at your own aesthetic. So we look forward to uh, you folks uh, communicating with us leading up to and not only uh, leading up to but also uh, as as your career path uh, evolves, do stay in touch with us. Uh, I'm Paulette McKaylick. I've been working with Bob Kearney for uh, the last number of years. I've only recently met Steve. Uh, I'm typically the person who is in the darkroom during the couple of days helping people uh, with coding, with working with the different chemistries, rinsing out, understanding how the process works and a good workflow. And essentially we've done, Bob and I have done a couple of workshops together. We've always had a great group of people and I really look forward to getting to know some more people in the darkroom. <laughs>